Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm going to uh, be changing um, the front and rear brake pads on the Honda Forza 125. Um, I've already done a video showing you how to replace the front brake pads, but I did it the easy way where you don't actually take the caliper off. Today, I'm going to take the caliper off, and um, throughout the video, I'm going to show you a few little tips and tricks, uh, do a little bit of maintenance on it while we're doing it. Um, so yeah, right, the first thing we need to be doing, um, we need to take these two bolts out so that we can remove the caliper, um, and then we can get the brake shoes out. So I'll get the appropriate socket and we'll crack that open. Right, I don't want to make this video really long winded, so... I'm not going to show you me undoing bolts and stuff, but that was a 12 mil socket. So you just take the bolts out with a 12 mil, and then the whole uh, brake caliper uh, with the uh, ABS sensor will come off in one go. And once you've got it like that, that's it. You'll be able to see the brake pads. Well, this is at six and a half thousand miles this is and you can see they was right down i mean i wasn't 100 percent but now i've uh, i'm glad i've uh, changed them while i have while i am the state of them it's like nothing left what you want to do while it's in this situation is um try and press your pistons back in uh, so what you want to do is get something in between here and open up your uh, brake pads. One sec. So the next thing you want to do, get yourself a nice flathead screwdriver and then undo that thread there, pull that out. So, screw that all the way out. Once you took that piece out, there'll be a 5mm uh, Allen bolt you need to remove that as well once you remove that you'll be able to get the pads out so we unscrew that once you've got your old brake pads out you could do a bit of a, a bit of a service on this um, I'm running a bit tight on time today so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna really bother but what you could do is use red grease uh, make sure it's red grease as well do not use WD-40, because WD-40 will rot the seals. But if you put some red grease on this pin here, and you put a little bit around your uh, actual uh, pistons, it will um, help them to run a bit smoother. I mean, I'll have a quick look in my uh, toolbox. If I can find some red grease, I'll, I'll put some on. But uh, that's it. That's that. That's the removal of the uh, brake pads. And you know what, I think I did mine just in time. Look how much is left on that. Oh, it's not focusing in very good, but absolutely nothing. Maybe about another week, another two weeks, that would have been down to the metal. All right, so these are the brake pads I've bought. And I know these are cheap as chips, but there's gonna be a reason why right so if you buy organic brake pads that means they've got bits of rubber in them and they're not as long lasting so yeah they don't la they don't last that long but they work fantastic in wet weather and also it doesn't wear your your disc down as much so if you buy like i don't know synthed brembo like racing pads yeah they're great for racing but when you use them in the wet, they're, sh they're rubbish. And also, they wear your disc down. Because they're so hard wearing, you actually do damage to your disc. And also, um, you're never going to get them up to temperature to work properly. Unless you're on a racetrack where you're like absolutely rinsing the hell out of your bike. And let's be facing it, on, on a scooter you're not going to really be doing them sort of speeds. So, me personally, I recommend just getting the organic ones. 
uh, and then just replacing them like more often. So with these, you probably probably find they'll probably last a year. I mean, like you say, you can go, you can buy the original Brembos, and they've lasted me what two years, six and a half thousand miles. Or you can just buy these ones, and then these will probably last about four thousand miles. I mean, if I've still got the scooter in, in four thousand miles time, I'll do an update. But that's the pads I'm going to be putting in anyway. So let's get them out and bang them on. So if you look at the difference of a new brake pad, if you compare it to that one that I've just took off, you can see the difference. Um, oh yeah, just in case, if you were like looking about buying these, these EBC ones, these are the front ones, and uh, those are the back ones. I'll throw a link underneath. Um, I think they're selling. I think I bought these off eBay, but. I think they sell them on Amazon. So putting them in, just exactly the opposite of what you've just done, taking them out really. You just gotta make sure circle bits on the pin side. Wait, hold on a minute. So the pin goes through there, and then that little that little latch goes in that gap there. I'll just put them on there and you'll be able to see kind of how they sit. Alright, so that's the pads back in. If you can see the clip, no, this isn't focusing in very well. The clip at the top goes in there like that. And then the pin just goes through the hole. So then it's just reverse, tighten that back up. Put your little cap back in. And then put your bolts back in here. Yeah. Make sure you put a little bit of Loctite on these. You don't want them uh, rattling loose and uh, coming out. Uh, off the top of my head, so I'm not 100% sure what the torque is on that. But an estimate, I'd say about 25 newton meters. Right, that's the caliper back on. So I want to tell you a few tips and tricks while you're doing this. So when you're opening up the pistons to put the new pads in, if you've had your Forza serviced, be careful they haven't topped up your reservoir because that's what sap and remind your stuff. Just um, when I opened the uh, pistons, it overflowed the uh, reservoir. So now I've had to um, I've had to drain some off to get the level back down again. And I've actually made it a little bit too low, but. I'll top that back up. Um, another thing as well, when you're tightening up the bolts on the um, caliper, the best way to do it as well, when you're just tightening up the last bit, hold your front brake in, because what that'll do, it'll align it. Um, I know it's only a couple of millimeters out, or, but it will make it um, absolutely like straight. Anyway, so that's the front one. Now I'm gonna move on to the back one. And the back one is a bit of a pain, but uh, we'll sort it. Right, rear one. I wasn't going to bother doing this because there is actually quite a bit of meat still on there. But to do this, you need to take the exhaust off. So 14 mil, and then three bolts. And then on the head a bit, it's a 10 mil, two bolts there. So once you've got the exhaust off, it'll expose this nut and this nut, or bolt even. Uh, I think that might be a 12 mil. Uh, have a quick look. Yep. So under them two, and it'll release the caliper. I'd quickly add um, if you've got ring spanners you don't have to actually take the exhaust off you can remove that brake uh, caliper just using a 12 mil ring spanner but I couldn't find mine so uh, I did it that way right, I've tried to shorten this down as, as much as I can so once you've undone them two bolts this will come off but what you want to do this little clip that holds the sensor 
to the uh, brake hose. Uh, you want to take that off. Once this is free, you'll see there's a bolt at the front. Um, it's a 12 mil. So you just get your um, spanner on the back here and do this bolt at the front. That comes out and then that swings out like that. And then it gives you access to your uh, brake pads. Okay. Right, so when you're preparing your pads, um, this is the original ones. The one pad that you're going to put on the side of the piston, so wherever the piston is. So the one you're going to put on that side, you need to take this anti squeal uh, little plate off, take it off the original one, and then just put it onto these ones. And then when you put them back on, they just slide. I'll put that one on first. So they just slide on from the back. So you just line them up and then just slide them on. Um, I'll put them on because it's hard to hold the camera. And I'll show you. Right. So you put them on from the back. Like, put them on that one. So you put the anti squeal on the same size as the piston, like I said. And when you put them on, they look like that. So there's a big section, and then the small bit goes at the bottom. Then all you do is close it all back up. So push them across, close it up. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll do it, and then I'll put the bolt in and show you what it looks like. So you put the spanner on the back like that, tighten this nut all the way up, and then just do it hand tight. Like, don't absolutely bollock it up. But do it tight, don't do not do it so it's still loose. And then it'll look like this now. You need to prise them apart so you can get it over the disc and then just put it back into position. When you put these bolts back in, this one and this one, make sure you put some um, thread lock on. Uh, blue will be sufficient. You don't need to put the red one on. Red's like more uh, difficult to undo. But yeah, just make sure you put some of that on. You don't want them coming loose. And then that's it. Um, same as the front one. When you're tightening up this last little bit on this, so do it hand tight. And then when you just tighten up the last bit, um, get somebody to hold the back brake for you. It just aligns everything. Um, I mean, it doesn't make that much difference, um, but it's best to do it that way. And then just put your exhaust back on. And that's it. Job's done. So... Um, yeah, that's the end of the video. And where you've got your exhaust stuff, you might as well give you the swing arm a bit of a clean. But, uh, yep, yeah, for this video, that's the end. Uh, thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye.